Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Finger Lakes Regional Check-In Team Number 3015 Ranger Robotics. And I'm here with Jimmy, Tessa, and Joe. And you've got to check out this machine. Double shooter, double intake. One of the most unique robots I have seen this year so far and a great traversal climb. Can't wait to talk about it all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their combat battle bots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu slash apply to learn more. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So, Jimmy, before we get into the insides of your robot, we're going to be talking about actually your bumpers on your robot. Talk to me about what's uh, unique to it, and they look pretty sweet, too. So, um, in my freshman year and my sophomore year, we used to have full on our, our, our bumpers like we uh, like a lot of teams do and when I became lower mech leader my biggest thing was I wanted to change that up so right here we have a tapered lock which has a pin right here and it uh, when you put them on it's as easy as uh, slice it through butter this one's not that good <laughs> it, it, the one... butter hasn't been microwaved yet I get it yeah yeah so uh, right here, we drop a pin in, and it's that easy. It takes a couple seconds. So when you're looking at it, like, I mean, what advice do you have for other teams who are maybe looking at improving their bumpers as well? Well, not everybody has a 3D printer. Last year, we had um, a different situation where we kind of, like, set the bumpers on, and it went into these slots in the, the drive frame before we went to uh, what I like to call the ice cream sandwich drive. Um, and uh, just... Kind of think outside the box. Don't lock in on you know nuts and bolts. We had a lot of problems where um, we would strip a bolt, and then that would cause us a huge delay for something as simple as um, putting bumpers on before a match. So we're going to jump into your robot here, and uh, you guys have dual everything on your robot, from the intake all the way to the shooter as well. Talk to me about the general strategy, and then we'll jump right into the actual intake itself. So um, at the beginning of the season, and you know, with many years, we have only gone with one climber. Because when you have two climbers, you have to line up two hooks. But the problem with that is we can't have two intakes because we can't. It's hard to get it around into one shooter. So we had um, one shooter go on each side of the climber. Um, for our intakes, um, funny story is we we weren't even going to have the intakes at the beginning of the year, but then we extended out, and we were able to fit it in right here. Um, the nice thing about our our intakes are. Um, if this, if something in here breaks, we're able to swap this part out and put in a new one, or take this off, keep the without having to change anything here, and just change the arms. Um, we use Mechnum wheels here in order to pull it in, and then it gets sucked right into our next intake. So uh, both sides of your uh, robot are exactly identical, right? So they function every same way. Yep, we can shoot high and low out of both shooters. Well, as we start to go up in the shooters, bring Tessa in to talk a little bit more about your uh, shooters itself. And uh, is there anything from like an indexing standpoint you want to talk about, like how you get the cargo into your shooter? So inside our feeder house, we have three rollers that help bring up the balls. We got one at the bottom to help get it in and two on either side to help bring it up. Um, inside, we also have a tongue here to keep the robot uh, from like scratching up the balls all the time. On our tote. Dual shooters, we have adjustable hoods. So our hoods are able to change the angle all throughout the match. And that's really what helps us shoot high and low. Both of our hoods are run by the same motor with the help of this synchro shaft. It connects through here. It's super thin, so it doesn't get in the way of our climb. And we have a bunch of gears here that mesh with this custom made um, hood gear. Um, our two shooters, they're run by separate motors. So we actually have the capability to shoot high and low at the same time. The biggest reason that we have two shooter, shooters, at least in my opinion, is that it, um, it gets rid of the need to have to wait a second for it to catch back up to speed after shooting a ball. So we can just go ahead and shoot two right away instead of having to wait for one shooter to catch back up to speed. 
When you're looking at uh, your adjustable hoods on there, I'm really interested to hear uh, that you're uh, gearing them uh, on the same motor as well, too. What was kind of the uh, initial thought? Like, is that the way you initially wanted to go between having the two hoods moving at the same time? So initially it was a little different. Um, I think we always decided to have just one motor so they can, um, they're just synchroed. Sure. But we did consider and play with the idea of having two separate ones and being able to move the hood separately. But from a strategy standpoint, I don't think we ever saw a reason to be able to have to move them differently. So it also benefits us only having one motor because that's just one less thing we have to worry about and just a little less weight on our already really dense robot. The last thing I want to ask you before we move on to your climber is uh, in regards to like your limelight. So if your limelight on one side of the shooter or on one of the shooters itself, does it make a difference that it's on one versus the other when you're kind of lining up from a dual shooter perspective? Uh, that would be a question that I would ask Joe. Uh, as far as the limelight on the one side of the shooter is concerned, uh, if we're if we have uh, balls on both sides, we really want to uh, have it so that the center of the robot is facing the goal mostly, rather than uh, one lime, one side of the robot or the other. Uh, so we have uh, we can automatically use the limelight to determine how far away we are from the goal, as well as knowing a couple other coordinates of the limelight relative to other parts of the robot. We can use that to uh, create a corrected angle. Uh, so that uh, our robot actually faces the goal rather than just the right shooter here. Uh, so that both the left and the right shooter can shoot at the same time and the same goal, and uh, we don't miss uh, wide left on one shooter. Uh, while we have you, let's talk autonomous a little bit and talk about uh, you guys are using Pathfinder on your robot. So let's show uh, yeah. off a little bit about what you're doing for auto. Yeah, so we have, uh, we've been using Path Planner. We have multiple paths in here. Uh, our five ball path is split into five uh, different paths that runs uh, automatically um, and gets all five of these balls um, and uh, today uh, we did it and we're the first uh, qualification match today to get the full quintet and did it by ourselves. So. Let's wrap up on your robot. We're yep. going to go back and talk about your uh, climber here. So talk a little bit more uh, about your climber design and what's gone into it. So again, going back to uh, what I said on why we did the two shooters, we wanted a central climber so that we don't have to worry about two hooks. So we have this guy come up, we drive back into the mid bar, our flop yard comes up, grabs on, and then we pull, or and then we, yeah, then we pull up. Sorry, it's so confusing. Uh, and then we come over and we swing down and grab the next one. The last match that we actually saw, uh, your team had a little bit of trouble getting up on traversal rung. It seemed like you missed on your first swing, uh, but then you were actually able to recover and get it. Uh, can you just talk to me about that match, kind of what happened during that? Yeah, actually, so we were we were pulled up here, and then um, normally our, our climber arm comes down onto the bar, and then it hits here. So normally, we come down, and we hit here, and then this releases from the bar, and then we swing onto that one. But we were, as we were swinging, we got underneath the bar, and we hit here. And this can sometimes be kind of dangerous, but um, it was actually our friend there, and we were able to get the, the traversal climb. Well, 3015 Ranger Box, uh, the first two matches as we're filming this, you have looked absolutely fantastic, four RPs both times. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing how your robot performs here, but congratulations on a very creative and innovative robot that's performing so well. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.